Hey everyone, come on, it is Sunday, the best day of the week. Hey, my name is Henry. We are glad you are watching or listening from wherever you're watching at. We wanna say thank you for allowing us to be in your space, where, whatever that may look like, because we're the church on the go, we're church online, we're church mobile, we're everywhere. So whatever space it is, thank you. And it's, it's never the same without you. Hey, it's going to be an amazing time today as we continue the collection of talks of Freedom Experience Episode 6. Yeah, if you haven't watched 1 through 5, hey, thank God for YouTube. Go back and watch them 1 through 5 and get caught up. Speaking of YouTube, I want to say thank you to all the people that have subscribed to any of our social media handles. Thank you so much as we can't do this without you and continues to do us a favor and be, come on, a social media evangelist. Share the content as it lives you and helps you. Come on, let's go help others. Let's go serve others. Let's go lift others. You know, I'm reminded of this, that knowledge is power, but knowledge is more powerful when it's shared. So come on, help us make a difference in the lives of people around the world. And if you have not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Subscribe now, hit that notification bell. Come on, it will always alert you when new content is dropped to give you the everyday handles, come on, in everything you do in life, come on. So we super, super excited. Do me a favor, let's lean in and let's represent on the chat line. Especially, you know, when we get in God's word, something nudges you, Come on, talk back to us on the chat line. We wanna hear from you. We wanna see you engaged and plugged in in everything we're doing. And, uh, and represent, let us know where you're representing from. Come on, give us a big shout out and just know that we are praying for you. Let's pray today. Father, we just thank you, Father, for this amazing day, Father, Lord God, a new season, a new day, Father, Lord God. For Father, everyone watching or listening, Father, Lord God, across the world, we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you will invade the lives of every person right now, wherever they may be, whatever place they may be found in right now, that you will, Father, minister to them through your holy word, Father. I thank you for fresh oil, for fresh revelation, oil in my in my clay my my lips of clay father i thank you father this day that we're going to see miracle signs and wonders as your people begin this freedom experience on earth come on in jesus name we pray represent let's go put it on the chat line and as we get started as you're watching and listening right now share this content come on share this content Let's go. Let's get it. I want, I want to start off with the book of Joshua. We've been in the book of Joshua. Actually, we've been in five verses. Joshua 5, 10 through 15. I want to read 13, 14, and 15. I want to pick up where I ended up last week in, in episode 5. Look at what it says in verse 13. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, a man stood apart opposite him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? So he said, No, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshiped and said to him, what does my Lord say to his servant? Hmm. Then the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, Take your sandal off your foot, for the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. So rich, so powerful right there. I can go in, in different directions here, but I, I want to I land this play, playing with episode 6 on the freedom experience. Here's something cool, that when God showed up, Joshua did not even recognize God. We just read that. Uh, to me, it's, it's, it's super cool and phenomenal because 
How don't you not recognize that was God? I, I, I want you to really get this point as it's very important to me. Come on, it's very important to me as I understood it, as the revelation came to me. I want you to get this point. I don't want you to leave without getting this point. Because Joshua didn't actually know if he was on his side or on the enemy's side. Have you ever been in those moments? Come on, you don't even know if God's for you or maybe he's not for you. Or maybe he's against you, you know? I want you to really just chew on that question and think about that question. Are you on my side? In other words, what, what Joshua is really relating to is based on what you brought, this doesn't look like you, God. Based upon what you brought, this doesn't look like you. In other words, what am I saying? Here's Joshua. You, you brought tribulations. Come on. You brought tests. You brought trials and you brought a fight because based on what you brought, you don't look like the God that I was imagining of. You aren't God. And, and then the reason I say that is because I've been taught by church that you don't need to fight. You know, you are a, a God which meets every need and you take care of me, God. And now you've given me a sword. In other words, I've been, I was taught and brought up that God will take care of you. Leave it up to God. Just wait on God. He, he's there for you. He's fighting your battles. I name it and claim it and X, Y, Z. And, and I was taught that and and now he's giving me a sword. Wait a minute. This doesn't make sense. What are you talking about? You No. You told me that you're going to meet my every need. You told me you're going to take care of me. But you got to understand now that as we cross into the other side, come on, the fight is going to demand Come on, this freedom is going to demand a fight. It's going to demand a mental transformation. And what this fight looks like now is that he wants to work with you. Come on, somebody. You thought because you went through the tests and the trials and the tribulations and, and the fight that you now crossed over into the Jericho. You're on the other side. Come on, you're excited. You're on the other side, finally. Come on, free at last. And Jericho was talking back to you. Let's see if you're going to get through me first. <laughs> and little do you know that all the Ites family is already lined up for you. But you have this encounter. You see, our, me our mentality and our concept of God has been created by our experience in the past. And we have to be careful. Because what I'm telling you is the same God that was with us when we launched City Church International 10 years ago. Well, now, 10 plus now. It may not look like the same God the next 10 years. My God. Some of us may say God is not with us anymore. I still remember Pentecost Sunday. May in May of 2020 and we were in our building it was that last service before we decided to close down the building all the restrictions and all the regulations and COVID and the pandemic and XYZ and and maybe at the at, at that time the first 10 years we got to see God bring down the manna he, he, he bursted water out of a rock. Come on, somebody. He kept renewing. He, he, he was a, a soul maker. Come on. He kept our clothes nice and clean and fresh. But now he's saying to us, I'm going to give you a sword now because now you're going to have to work. My God, and I want to work with you. Hmm. 
You see, for us, some of us may be saying it may not look like the same God the next 10 years. Some of us may say God is not with us anymore. Let me tell you, no, he's still, he is still God. And now he wants you to do more work now. If there was a time for more work, it's now because the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Let me tell you, there's more than a pandemic of COVID or Delta or all these different strands. The, the pandemic is hopelessness. The pandemic is fear. The pandemic is anxiety and worry and uncertainty and doubt and unbelief. Come on. This is the greatest times to be alive. Some people pray, oh God, I wish I had the ministry I had 10 years ago. No, nope, not here. Come on, somebody. We're on to bigger and better things that God has for us. Some of us are even saying, oh God, I just wish things were back to normal. No, nope. come on. We're going to create the future. Come on. The next is now. We are, we are now in a new era. I don't know about you, but I, I refuse to read about history. Because today I've determined with my wife and in our ministry to create the future, to trailblaze new trails, come on, for the future. And we're super, super stoked. Somebody needs to shout right about now, fight. Come on, fight. And let me tell you, when you begin to speak about fight, over 100,000 restaurants in America in one year lost their restaurants, lost their business, their livelihood, their investments, their dreams. And all the other restaurants are still, some of them are still fighting. As a matter of fact, a lot of them are still fighting. And that's because we're in a time of a fight. You see, you have to understand this, that when you take on your own responsibility, that's now when you receive the sword of God. Hmm. You see, the, the appearance of God is so unexpected that Joshua said, are you God or are you on our enemy's side? Hmm. I truly believe that there are times when you really rebuke God. Hello, somebody. There's times when you really rebuke God before. Why do I say that? And God says, this ain't the devil. This is me. Oh, come on, somebody. And maybe because it doesn't look like what you were looking at or it doesn't feel the way it supposed to feel or you think it's supposed to feel or and you're rebuking the enemy and, and it's really God and he's there for you I believe that we're in those moments and we have to be sensitive to the times and the seasons and no of course you are always a good God because that's who he is and that's what God says I am good at what I am doing you see, because God is doing something new in this season. He's doing something new. And right now, I truly believe that I'm, God is training you how to be responsible. My God. Woo. I believe that right now in this moment, he's training you because he's a good God. He's training you on how to be responsible. God is not going to give you a warm, fuzzy, every time you meet with him. Come on, somebody. He's not going to bless you with free manna and nice clothes and take water out of the rock. One day and time, God is going to come to you and say, dig your own well. <sighs> Dig your own well. Come on, somebody. Hey, hey, I, I've said it like this before. Everybody wants a seven-day blessing on a, on a one-hour commitment. Come on. Hmm. And he's going to come to us and say, dig your own well. And, and you may say, but Lord, the last 10 years, you gave us water from the rock. Yep, I know that. I did give you, you know, water from a rock. I did give you manna. 
The next 10 years, guess what? You're going to have to dig well. The next 10 years, you're, gonna, you're going to find your own water. Hmm. You're going to find your own water. See, Joshua didn't recognize God. Because when you grow up, listen closely, when you grow up, you enter the new era of responsibility and you need a fighter. Hmm. You see, when you grow up, you enter a new era of responsibility and you need a fighter. Can I suggest to you and I today all over the world that when the season of maturity has come, the miracle supply stop. Wow. Let me say it very clear. When the season of maturity has come, the miracle supply stop. And I want to say this very carefully because some folks that are watching and listening may say, what are you saying that miracles stop, that miracles cease? What, what are you really saying? No, this is what I'm really saying. What happens then is God demands, watch this, you better put this on the chat line, that you become a part of the miracle. Ooh. You've been the one receiving the miracles and now you're in a season of maturity, which is a season of responsibility and it's going to require a fight for you to dig your well, but you're going to work with him and now he's saying, you know what? You've enjoyed these miracles, but now I want you to become part of a miracle. Oh, God, a part of a miracle. Hello, somebody. You see, when they were eating manna, you know, it came down from the heavens and they didn't do anything to get it. They didn't do anything to get it. They didn't exercise their faith. As a matter of fact, what they were doing was complete opposite. They were murmuring when it was coming down. Oh, Jesus. They were living rotten. Hello, somebody. We got some rotten Christian folks up in the house. They were living rotten where they can just take and eat all the time. And they took it for granted those 10 years, those, those, those seasons in the house of God. They, they can just come and eat. They can come and eat. They, can, they took it for granted. But even in that time, they were living rotten and God was still feeding them. Woo! Wow. Woo! And God was still feeding them while they were coming and going. Yeah, we were, well, pastor, we miss going to the church. Well, but no. You were murmuring all that time. Come on, somebody. The manna was coming. Come on. And it's very easy. But when you grow up, God expects you, listen closely, when you grow up, God expects you, listen closely, to live clean, to live righteous, to be holy, and to walk circumspect. What do I mean by circumspect? Prudent. What do I mean by prudent? To consider all circumstances and possible consequences and to be a part of the miracle. <laughs> To be part of the miracle. Let me tell you, City Church International, our, our days are better than ever. Our season is better than ever. The vision is better than ever. Come on. The latter shall be greater. The latter rain and the former rain. But now God is saying, I want you to be part of the miracle. Hmm. We've entered a season of maturity. A season to say, you know what, it's going to require for you to dig a well. And I want to work with you. This is why I appear to you with a sword in my hand. Huh. A sword because last time I was a burning phenomenon. But this time I'm a sword in my hand. You don't even recognize. You don't even know. But it's okay, Josh. Come on. We got you. Let's go. Let's get it. I want to tell somebody today that... Today is a choice between you and God, between you and freedom. Deliverance and freedom, as you learn in this, in this collection of talks, is two different things. Huh. 
two different things. And people live in between two water masses, either the Red Sea or the Jordan River. <laughs> You're in one of them. Either we're in this, in this collection of talks where we learn where it's either bondage, it's training, or it's freedom. I believe today you are ready. I'm truly convinced that therefore God will not, will not finish this building for us. You know, for City Church International. He will not complete what he has started for you and I. The vision is alive. The dream is alive. Greater things are coming. More is coming. I'm just grateful that I can be part of the miracle. Not for me, but to be a way maker for others. To trailblaze new trails for others that need hope. Come on. That need hope. One thing that I can say in ministry in the last 10 plus years is that experience became the father of all wisdom for my wife and I. And we are super stoked. But more importantly, we want a people that know who their God is and they know who they are in God. And today, if you cannot answer that question, you know, it's your opportunity to say you know what i'm crossing over i'm crossing over i remember that i began this collection of talks with five questions who am i <laughs> where am i from and then why am i here what can i do where am i going and if you still cannot answer those questions let me help you my friend by entering the greatest miracle of all. And that is by you submitting and surrendering and giving your life to Jesus Christ. So today, will you join the Billion Soul Harvest simply by saying, Jesus, I give you my life. Come on, Jesus, I give you my life. You see, God is moved by your inward, by your motives from your inside. And today you did you have the greatest miracle of all and we want you to continue this journey we want you to continue this journey into freedom and to live in freedom and so today we're so proud of you if you just prayed that simple prayer put it on the chat line as we want to continue to connect and if you haven't subscribed to any of our social media handles subscribe now so you stay plugged in in the journey we want to cheer you on from our side, and we're so proud of you. We also want to take the time to say thank you to all the generous givers that are faithful in their tithes and their offerings week after week, month after month. We can't do this without you. As a matter of fact, your generosity becomes a way maker for many others around the world. And we are so grateful for you. And today, Thank you to all our family, friends, faith, partners from around the world for your tithes and offerings. It is simple to give. You can text to give City Church INT to 77977 or just check out our website and give online. And we're standing on Psalm 6511 that he, can, he crowns our year with his goodness and his paths drip with his abundance. Come on, his paths drip with his abundance. Abundant living, come on, becoming part of a miracle. And we believe to think, believe, expect, receive, increase, 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 increase in Jesus' name. Come on, all things new and truly the best is yet to come. So let's go into the mission field this week. Let's go dominate, let's go crush by loving God, loving people, serving others, and change the world. And don't forget, share this content. Let's go.